It's a condition that's estimated to affect up to one in 10 women, with many of them not even knowing that they have it. In today's episode with Dr. Nora, we're gonna be chatting to a patient who suffers from a condition known as lipoedema. We're gonna be finding out what this condition is, how it affects the patient, and more importantly, having a listen to the heart sounds of a patient who has lipoedema. So without further ado, let's call in our patient and get questioning. Done, cinnamon, flex them. <laughs> oh yeah, punch, 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 punch. I'm good, how are you? Good to see you. you. Yeah, you too. Lovely to have you on the show. So, Cinema, today's episode is all about lipoedema. Yes. And I understand you have that, and you're going to tell our viewers what that is. So, okay. what is it? Okay, so lipoedema, from my perspective, is angry fat disease. Okay. So, that's the easiest way to say it. I've only been, just been diagnosed. I've probably had this disease probably the majority of my life. Okay. From what I understand, my condition can progress if I don't have good maintenance, good conservative management. Okay. And um, we've had some numerous other underlying medical conditions that have been laying dormant, probably mm -hmm. because we've been focusing so much on getting the lipoedema under control yeah. that other parts of my health have been affected yes. or in some way um, interrupted, I'd like mm -hmm. to use the word. I, I hate to say the word chronically ill rather than medically fascinating yeah. Yeah. because it's all about mindset yeah. and how you can approach this disease. Yeah. If you let it get ahead of you, yeah. then the psychology of it all gets really heavy. It does, yeah, absolutely. And I guess just to kind of reiterate what Cinnamon's saying, so lipoedema is essentially angry fat. So it's a distribution of fat that is unusual. So usually yes. we would see uh, fat distributed all over our bodies. However, in patients who do suffer from uh, lipoedema, they tend to have uh, fat tissue accumulating in their arms, their abdomens, their t uh, legs as well. But sometimes it does spare the hands and the feet. So you may notice that, for example, with Cinnamon, her hands look beautiful and, and we do see that the <laughs> bit of the tissue accumulation yes, is more on the arms. Arms. Up and, in my arms. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it can be quite painful. I think that's the biggest thing it's to extremely understand. Painful. So it is an abnormal accumulation, in fact, which is painful. It's tender for the patients and it also you can bruise as well and it feels very uncomfortable. And yeah. I think the biggest misconce misconception with um, a lot of patients is that they think that this is all weight related. So it's not related to your diet, it's not something that you've eaten yeah. or no. it's, it's more of a genetic profile potentially. I've done every weight loss program, every low calorie yeah. option, every fad diet, every supplement, everything that you possibly name. Eradicating carbohydrates and sugar mm. has been the best things that I've done in regards to my pain levels. Yes. I find that my legs are the things that, that cause me the most pain, especially on days when it's mm. hot and mm. the heat really gets to me. I knew it wasn't just the lipoedema, right. that there was something else not quite right. And you know, it, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe, so I couldn't walk. So there's all these, it was like a, uh, a, an avalanche of things that sure. just kept coming down on top of me. I was getting frustrated. Mm -hmm. I really, really wanted to move. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, just walking from my front door mm -hmm. to the post box mm -hmm. was just hard. out of, no, I couldn't do it without losing my breath. And it was scary. It was scary. Because I was told that I had a bicuspid heart murmur. And in fact, back when I was 19, and in fact, I don't. I have a completely different condition altogether. And what condition is that? It you is have? called. <laughs> It is called diastolic dysfunction. So it is the left ventricle, uh -huh. from what I, or well, left chamber, yes. is in like a stenosis. Like it's it's hardened and it doesn't pump. From what I understand, but you're it. the expert. Do you, do you know what? I have to say, a lot of patients actually have their own medical knowledge and a lot of it is absolutely right. And very often I always say to my patients, you know, you know your body best and you know what you've been through. And you know, Simon, you're absolutely right. And I've just showed just for the viewers before we have a listen to your heart sounds, mm -hmm. um, what we mean by left ventricular or dy diastolic dysfunction. So this is our beautiful organ, as you can see here, it's the lovely heart that you guys all know about. If we open it up, we can see that we've got those four chambers, so the atria and the ventricles, and this is the left side, so the left ventricle here. So particularly for cinnamon, she her left ventricle is, uh, she's got diastolic dysfunction, which means that the left ventricle wall itself is stiff and it's hard, and it doesn't relax as well as it should between beats. So what that means is when the blood is flowing from the atria, 
coming down into the ventricle because this is like a stiff almost a stiff balloon if you like it just won't relax and it doesn't let the blood in as, as it should so the heart has to contract even harder to help that shortfall so in effect what happens after a little bit of time or after several years perhaps is that this has to overwork and sometimes what that can lead on to is things like high blood pressure or even heart failure as well in the future so it is imperative for you know a good diagnosis the correct diagnosis and the correct Excellent. treatment as well and we'll have a listen to Cinnamon's Heart because actually I think you guys will really like this. <laughs> it, it makes some really cool noises. It's pretty it's, cool. There's some real good um, obvious regurgitation there and it has been for years. I used to love being hooked up to all the machines and hearing all the sloshing around. It never frightened me because I knew that I was still up and mobile. Yeah, you're so working, I, you're I felt okay, me. but obviously <laughs> this little ticker of mine's had to do some work. That's I awesome. think I think we need to listen to her heart, would you guys reckon? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. Let's do yeah, it. let's take a listen. So for this, I'm using my trusty Littman stethoscope. And I have to say one thing. Cinnamon saw my video and she was like, you need to listen to my heart. I saw that you got this cool little gadget. You need to listen to my heart. So guys, this is your treat. So I'm going to pop it on. So this time I'm now using the bell and the diaphragm, which will hopefully give me the high and the low frequency sounds together. So we'll take another listen now. <laughs> so there you've heard both the aortic and the pulmonary valves. Let me know what you think. Um, I think it sounds really fascinating actually. I can't wait to share with you. It's actually really therapeutic. It is. <laughs> Listening to your heart is really relaxing. I have to suck and fall asleep just standing there. <laughs> Oh, we have got such a treat for you now. We're going to see what Cinnamon's heart sounds like after a little bit of gentle walking on the spot. And we're going to see how it listens when it's a little bit excited and then when it calms oh. down as well. Guys, this is this is the channel. This is the channel. If you're not yeah. subbed up, sub on. Let's go. Let's do a bit of working out. Flex those guns, Cinnamon. Flex them. Oh, yeah. Punch, 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 punch. All right, now you're all rested up. I've got to say, that was pretty cool, listening to your heart. I feel like I could just listen to your heart all day long. <laughs> so it sounded, it actually sounded quite different because you actually notice the murmur a lot more. So rather than listening to the, the actual definite boom, 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 you hear a lot more of the murmur, regurgitation. So it's harder to differentiate the heart sounds, which is really interesting because as we know, the heart is contracting, it's really working hard. So every time it contracts, it's harder and harder. You're gonna hear more of that turbulent blood flow. So as you could hear, it was a lot more turbulent. And you can hear that murmur more so than your heart sound, which is very interesting. Cool. 
so listening to Cinnamon's heart, so you can actually hear there is an audible murmur. So compared to, say, for example, um, a regular heartbeat where it goes boom, 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 there is a fourth heart sound, which means it goes boom, boom, shh, boom, boom, shh, boom, boom, shh, boom, boom, shh. So you can actually hear it, and it's really clear. And we listened over the aortic and the pulmonary valve. So as the heart is relaxing, because we've got that stiffness in the left ventricle, it's having to work that extra hard. And so you hear that whooshing noise, and there may also be a bit of regurgitation as well. Absolutely. Said. Yeah. yeah. So the regurgitation is what causes that kind of turbulent flow of the blood through the valve itself. So that is just fascinating. It's it so so fascinating. Thank you so much for having letting us listen that's, to your heart. My, it's totally fine. Thank it's, you. It's, it's always fun to, to share my little rave party it that's is. going on inside. Yeah. My head. <laughs> your rave party. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, so now we know we've listened to your heart and we had a nice listen to that. But what kind of things have you been told to sort of be aware of with with this condition? Okay. Ironically, weight is the biggest issue. Um, also making sure that, you know, you, I, I find drinking plenty of water, really good water, helps and hydrating. Obviously, there's that balance of fluid Correct. in, fluid out. So um, at the moment, we're, we're trying a medication to, to help that help help that out um, and it seems to be working really well. So, and it, funnily enough, it's a medication that you're told not to take when you have lipedema. So this is why getting in, in touch with a doctor that is um, clued up with lipedema and there aren't that many around, please guys, learn. Because this sort of thing can go undetected yeah. because we believe that it's just our weight, it's mm -hmm. just who we are and we have to deal with it. Could you imagine going and doing a workout with a heart like this? Yeah. What could possibly happen to somebody who has lipedema, mm -hmm. who is mm -hmm. unaware, who is trying to lose weight off their yeah. butt yeah. because yeah. they, you know, the Kim Kardashian butt won't stay around forever. <laughs> Happy to, <laughs> but you know, this is the thing we're dealing with where yeah. in, especially through social media, you're getting the influencers saying, try this diet pill, do yeah. this workout. Yeah. For, a, for, for a woman with lipedema, especially the older you get, mm. the more unlikely mm. it is for you to, mm. to, to really get the results you're mm. looking for so diet exercise is still important mm. water nutrition making mm. sure that you keep your cholesterol down regular checks with your doctor in regards to blood pressure very good we're highly encouraged to use pool the pool yes, and good. that's great cardio yeah. as well as being able to float around you know lipedema is such a heavy mm. weight of when course. you're in a pool you feel like you're back to normal almost yeah. Yeah. even though you do sort of bobble around um, but the pool is the best thing for yes. lipo walking yeah. is great if you can manage it oh, I've got Oh, we've got girls that run mm. it, it's your it's up to you how far you know your body and yeah. you know how far you can go I, could, uh, I wouldn't say that any exercise is a bad exercise as long as you are working with your doctor and your sure. medical team to yeah. say look I want to start this program what do you think I've brought Definitely. programs to you and said yeah. hey are yeah. they okay is there yeah. anything in there that's nasty that I shouldn't mm. be taking um, Communication is so Very important. Good. It is, yeah, absolutely. And you touched upon some of the few treatments that are available. So, for yeah. example, low impact uh, sports or even some yeah. high impact on the advice of your doctor. Yeah. Diet and exercise, you know, diet is still important. Yeah. It, although it's not directly related to the food you're eating, you still have to be mindful of what you're eating. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing that, another thing that I'm going to plead, if the government manages to see this, none of our treatments are currently NHS. We okay. have nothing Medicare that will okay. provide us with. So yeah. with a disease that is so prevalent, mm -hmm. it needs to be looked at. It, yeah. it, it's as life-threatening as diabetes yeah. and cancer. Of course. Yeah. And it's, it's relatively unknown and we are not considered, you know, important enough at this stage to, oh. to get any funding so please if you see this and you're from the government please consider reaching out to some of especially the lipedema warriors the lipedema australia lipedema uk um, they are desperately scotland are doing it glasgow you rock <laughs> <laughs> they, they're getting the governments to, to pay attention that's so we need it all we need it to go worldwide yeah. now and you hear yeah. that australia that's it australia we're gonna do this me and Tim, <laughs> we're gonna rock this I'm on my side we're gonna side. get this <laughs>
gosh, look at that, guys. So anybody out there, girls or even boys, because we do know it can affect boys, please don't hesitate to see your local GP. They may not know. Um, in fact, they might not be aware of even lipoedema. It's not something that you commonly get taught in medical school. So just bring them a leaflet and say, look, I think I've got this. Um, please, can you consider it? And hopefully they'll be sympathetic to your cause and they'll take the further action and, and take it forward and give you some investigations and set you in the right path to see the multidisciplinary team that you need to see. Yep. Good. Thank don't you take no for an answer. Don't take no for an answer. Absolutely right. <laughs> Thank good. you so much, welcome. Cinnamon. It's been a pleasure. You're if welcome. you guys have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to drop us a line in the comment section below and we'll leave a link in the description below as well with Cinnamon's details if you guys want to get in touch. But for now, take care and stay healthy. <laughs> hey, we did it. Woo, that was awesome.